I'm going to share with you a quick way to easily make your content more readable, and that's by adding headers. Now, sometimes you'll run into content that's a big wall of text, really hard to read or find anything useful in them because of how it's structured. All the text just runs together as multiple paragraphs, and you might be stuck using command find, scrolling endlessly, or you'll probably just give up. So here, we're going to dig into Confluence, and I'm going to show you why headers are so useful. Not only are they going to help us break up content to make it easier to read, they're going to help us organize it in a way that makes sense to us as creators, but also to the folks reading it. And it's going to give us some other features, like the ability to link to specific parts of the document, and even do something like build a table of contents automatically on the fly. So let's pop over and see why headers are so important. Here's an example of a Confluence page with no headers or any other formatting. And you can see it's just one big wall of text. It's hard to really tell what's in any paragraph. There's no way to easily look around to find what's where. And I'm going to resort to scrolling endlessly to find something. It's also going to be hard for someone to come edit this because they're going to have to figure out exactly where they need to edit or add information. So let's edit this and I'll show you what headers look like. Up here in the top, we have our text styles, and there's seven of them, one of which is just normal text, but the other six are the headers in Confluence. The higher the number, the smaller the header, so you do have some options here in terms of size. Personally, I tend to use headers one and two frequently, but I'll also use higher number headers, for example, header five, if I'm doing something like building an FAQ. For example, if there's a question, where are our policies, I'll make that a header five, and then I'll have the text underneath it explain what it is. I'm going to leave this at the bottom because I'll show you why it's important to do something like this or why it's useful in a moment. Going back to my giant wall of text, I'm going to look through this and try and find sections that I can easily break up with headers. For example, at the top, I might have a heading one called background. And then my first paragraph may explain the page. And then under that, I might have a different header. I can click on this normal text and then click the one I want, or I can do something like command alt and a number to start the text at that header level. So for example, I might start another one here called policies. And under policies, there might be sub policies. So I might make this a smaller header, maybe size two. And maybe one more for my IT policies. And then at the bottom, I might have a where to go for help. And last, I'll have an FAQ section. Now, if I take a look at this page, right away, it's easier to use. These headers have broken up the text, so it's easy to tell what's where on the page. I can tell just by browsing that IT policies are in the middle. Or, oh, here's the FAQ. So this is the first major advantage headers give us. They break up the space on the page to make it easier to consume, but also easier to update. If someone comes in here and needs to update HR policies, they know exactly where to go. They won't have to guess. The next big thing that a header does for us is it provides what's called an anchor. It's effectively hyperlinked on the page. So if I mouse over my header, you'll see this little copy link to heading. If I give this link to someone, it will take them exactly to HR policies. If you notice in the URL at the end of it, it's got the name of the page, headers plus example, and then the hashtag symbol and the name of the header. And it linked me directly to HR policies. This is a great way to share content because now someone will go exactly where I want them to go and they'll see exactly what they're looking for. They won't have to go to the top of a page and then scroll and scroll and scroll to find what they want. Every single header has a hyperlink. Again, I use this a lot in frequently asked questions or FAQ because that header has its own hyperlink. I can send someone right to the answer they need instead of just to an overall page that has things. And again, to do that, I just mouse over it and click copy link. The third important thing that headers do is interact with macros or elements on the page. If I go to edit this, I can use these headers to build a table of contents on the page. This will automatically get built every time I adjust the page, add or remove headers, and likewise, so I don't have to go in and manually do that. Typically, I put these at the top of a page. 
and I'll use my forward slash, or I could click on the plus sign and just search for table of contents. And right away, because there are headers, it's going to pull in those headers. And you'll notice that they're hyperlinked. So if I don't do anything else and just publish this page, I've now made it significantly more useful. Someone can come in and just click on where to go for help, and they'll go straight to that content. This is a great way to easily increase the usefulness of your pages, and it's something I do on almost all of mine. Many of the Confluence templates I use have a table of contents section at the top, just to make it easy for folks to get to. Now we can take this one step further. In this table of contents macro, if I go to edit it, I have the ability to include or exclude headers based on the level of the header. So for example, I frequently change the format of my page. I'll have a layout with two columns, and I'll put my table of contents on the right side with that great macro. And then I'll have background information about the page on the left side. I like this particular format because it helps someone quickly figure out what the page is for, and then gives them all the links they need over here. This does cause a problem though. If you notice in my table of contents, background and table of contents show up. And this is because it's pulling in every header. So I'm quickly just going to go through and change some of the header levels to make sure everything is header level two or higher. Now visually this doesn't do much. You'll notice it's slightly smaller. However, I can now tell my table of contents to start at level two. And you'll notice it got rid of the background and table of contents. If I update this, this makes it even more useful because links to something that they're staring at don't really help. Now, this only shows information that isn't already at the top of the page, making this even more useful to folks. So those are three reasons headers are so important. They visually break up space to make it easier to consume or to update. They give us those anchor links so you can hyperlink directly to a header, and they automatically help us build a table of contents using a macro. These are very simple and easy things to do to make pages more useful and to reduce the friction and frustration people have finding content. And again, I include many of them in the templates I use. So I really hope you found that useful. If you did, like and subscribe. Drop a comment down below if you have other ways to use headers or have any questions. And I'm really looking forward to seeing you in another one of these soon.